It's time to begin our Bible study. We are thankful for each and every one that is joining us through live streaming. We thank you for joining us tonight and may you receive a blessing from the Lord. We are studying the book of 1 Peter chapter 2. Last time we, last Bible study we got started in this chapter and we covered a few verses. So tonight I'm hoping we'll cover a few more, but I hope you have your Bible. So if you want to follow along, we'll be reading 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 12 will be for our Bible study tonight. But first, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for this Bible study tonight. Thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to study your word, to, to know you as our Lord and Savior. And tonight, God, I pray that you will open up the scriptures to our understanding. Give me the ability to teach the word of God tonight. Let it be a blessing to me and to those who are listening. Let us all receive something for our souls. Have your way tonight. Bless and accomplish your will. In Jesus' name we pray, giving you all glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. First Peter chapter 2. Tonight I want to read to you verse 4 through 12. Verse 4, To whom come in as unto a living stone, disallow indeed of men, but chosen of God, and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scriptures, or scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe, he is precious, but unto them which be dis disobedient, the stone which the builders disallow, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had obtained mercy, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. I want to use this passage of scripture tonight and teach from the book of 1 Peter chapter 2. We want to talk about a title for tonight, Bible study. Uh, a simple title is called A Temple of Praise, a temple of praise. Uh, my mind go back to that song, that old classic song. It goes the lyrics. Some of the lyrics to it goes like this: "Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I will be a living sanctuary, O oh, for you." And so it is tonight, that's God's desire for each and every Christian after we get saved and we begin this new walk with God, this new life with God. God will constantly work in our life, preparing us to be a sanctuary of praise. In other words, our life will be lived to the praise and to the glory of Almighty God. Thank God tonight that we can live a life that is pleasing in the sight of God. And God will help us. 
God will help us, as David said in the Psalms. He said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. He said, my help cometh from the Lord. Thank God tonight that the Lord will never ask, uh, ask us to do something that we are not able to do. God will never give us anything that we can't bear and He will never ask us to do something that we are not able to. And so with all the things that the Bible laid out and all the things that God will ask us to do, He will provide the help that is necessary. And thank God for salvation. Salvation make this possible. Because we are saved, because we've been born again by the blood of Christ and the Spirit of God, we are able to live a holy and a pure and a godly life. And we can make that a prayer or even a practice. Lord, I want to be a temple of praise. I want my life to show forth the glory and the praise and the honor to Almighty God. And tonight, if you're out there listening, I don't know who all listens, but if you're out there listening tonight and you're not saved, you know, all you have to do is... is is believe in the gospel of Christ. Jesus died for your sins and rose again. And if you will repent of those sins, as the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you'll repent of that, those sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, He will save you and your life will become such a beautiful thing. Your life will become, you know, you see you go around and travel different places and you see temples and beautiful architect work, architectural work of of buildings that were built hundred year, hundreds of years ago or even longer than that and they're beautiful and you look at it and say man that's a beautiful temple and you walk in and you see all the artwork and all these things and 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 you just marvel of of the wonderful work of this temple is so beautiful even the temple that was built by solomon there was never one that was built like that and it's beautiful it's beautiful and it, it draws attention and people are will travel miles and miles to go look at it because it's a beautiful thing. And that's what God wants our life to be. He wants our life to be a beautiful temple of praise. And when people see us, they will see something different. You know, people are tired of seeing negative things and listen to negative things. And everybody around them are negative and nobody wants to do anything with their life. And they're all in the same cesspool of sin and wickedness and, and misery. And, and when a Christian comes along, even though they may not want to accept it, yet they look at you and they say, man, something different about that person. Something is absolutely different about that person is because God is making us into a beautiful temple of praise. He's making us into something beautiful as He shared in the Old Testament Scripture. He said, He shall beautify them through salvation. He'll beautify the meek through salvation. When a person gets saved, God will add beauty to your life. Not only spiritually, but I've seen many people, man, they came to God in sin and they, they, they look rough. They're rough. They're, they look very rough on the outside and the exterior. And then you see them after, because of all the effects of sin, and then you see them after maybe a, a few months of being a Christian, you're like, man, what a transformation. That person, is, that person looked beautiful inside and out. They become a very beautiful, very wonderful person, sweet and lovely to be around. And, and that's what salvation does. Salvation beautifies the individual, both inside and out. And thank God for that. And so tonight we want to talk about a temple of praise. And to fully understand this passage of Scripture, we have to, we have to look at verse 6. First, the first verse we want to look at is verse 6. We'll go back to 4 and 5 in a little bit. But verse 6 gives us the foundation upon which we can build this. He said, Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. And this, um, this verse of scripture read to you is a prophecy that was written in the Old Testament in the book of Isaiah chapter 28. I'll read it to you from the book of Isaiah also. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 14 through 17. He said, Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem, because ye have said, We have made a covenant with death and with hell. Are, are we at agreement? When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, 
I lay in Zion for a foundation stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. plummet. And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hiding place. And so that was written in the book of Isaiah chapter 28 verse 14 through 17. And Peter here is using it in his writing, quoting it straight from the book of Isaiah with a little bit variation of it. But he was showing to us that uh, even back then God was telling the people of Israel that there is a foundation upon which... We have to build our lives. And at that time, the rulers of Israel were very corrupt. And they had given themselves over to sin and lies. And they thought that they could establish their own standard of righteousness and judgment. And God began to speak to them and told them, He told them, I have a standard of judgment. I have a standard of righteousness that is settled in heaven and in earth, and no man can legally change that. And that standard of righteousness and judgment was the foundation stone in which he's building his church. And that foundation stone we know is Jesus Christ. Is Jesus Christ, as Jesus even told them in the book of Matthew chapter 21, verse 30, 42, he said, the stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. So God was telling them, you may think that you can build your life upon a lie and you've made refuge, lies your refuge and you've come up with your own judgment and your own way of doing things and you said, even when judgment will come, it will not, it will not touch us because we have our own standard. But what they failed to realize was God is the one that's building this temple. God is the one that is setting up this standard of righteousness. And He had set up a righteous standard in Israel. He set up a rock, a, a cornerstone, a rock upon which they were supposed to build their life. And that will never change. And that rock is Christ Jesus. And so Peter here, since Jesus, and, and he used the word in the Old Testament, Zion, Z-I-O-N, speaking of Mount Zion in Jerusalem, and he's letting him know, on earth, Jesus is the cornerstone. And then when Peter wrote to us in his writing, he says, since Jesus has already, already came to earth and died and rose again from the dead and ascended back to heaven, Peter let us know that the foundation stone or the standard of righteousness is forever settled in heaven. Because he said here in verse 6, Wherefore also it is contained in Scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion, S-I-O-N, Sion, which is the heavenly Jerusalem, as the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews. You can look it up yourself. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, he said, But ye are come unto Mount Sion, S-I-O-N, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. So, both Isaiah and Peter is letting us know whether on earth or in heaven, there is a foundation stone laid. Whether in heaven or in, whether in heaven or on earth or in earth, there is a foundation upon which men have to build their life, and that foundation or that cornerstone is Jesus Christ. Is Jesus Christ. And the cornerstone, as we all know, it's uh, in any brick building, the, the first stone that is laid is that cornerstone. It is that stone that is laid first and then everything else is based upon it. It is, it is very crucial. It is laid first and it ensures that the building is square and stable. So it's that cornerstone that is first set down and then everything else, every other stone, take their part or their or fit or, or lined up with that stone. And it is the rock upon which the weight of the entire structure is rest upon. And so, from Scripture we know that Jesus is that cornerstone of our faith. Jesus is a standard of Christianity. He sets the, the standard and He sets the righteousness and the judgment that we must follow. And even though men will try to change it, and they are trying, and they will try to change the standard of Christianity... They can because it is settled in heaven. 
It is settled in heaven. You say, preacher, how holy do I have to be to be a Christian? Who is my standard? Well, Jesus is our standard. Jesus is our standard. As Peter tells us in, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15, he said, But as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy, saith the Lord. So, establishing this Bible study tonight, we're talking about a temple of praise. Every temple must have a foundation. Every building must have a foundation. Every temple have a cornerstone. And that cornerstone, the building, the temple of praise that God is building is an eternal temple. It's a spiritual temple. It's a holy temple. And it's a temple that is built upon a solid foundation that will never be moved. Because that foundation is settled in heaven. And that founda foundation is Jesus Christ. And so let's go back now to our Bible reading here in 1 Peter chapter 2. Going, we, we did first, verse 6. Let's go back to verse 4. He said, To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. So Peter began to write to us and he said, when we come or we are coming to this temple, we're building this temple, he said, we're coming as unto a living stone. In other words, God is not building his temple on some dead, dried up rock that you can find somewhere and square it up and use it, but he's building his temple on a living stone person. He said a living stone, which means uh, that the stone or the foundation upon which uh, the temple of God is being built is alive, is alive. Jesus Christ uh, is alive. Our standard, our standard, this living stone is our standard for this temple and he's alive tonight. Thank God uh, that Jesus Christ is still alive and that's what he's telling us. He referred to him as a living stone stone we're not building our our life is not being built upon something dead or something that once was our life is being built upon a living christ amen a living christ the living word of god it is a living person the resurrected and glorified christ he is the foundation stone and then he said this stone was disallowed of men in other words they deny him we know when jesus came when jesus was on earth the the builders the the pharisees the sadducees they didn't want to accept him and so they refused him they reject him they denied him and that's what he meant disallowed indeed of men but he said he was chosen of god he was chosen of God and precious. And then in verse 5, he said, Ye also, ye also are built, ye also are, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And so he's telling us, Jesus is alive. He is that lively stone. We as Christians are also lively stones. God doesn't have dead Christians. Amen? Christianity is not a dead, dried up religion. Christianity is an excited thing. It's an exciting, exciting religion. It's, a, it's really not a religion. It's a relationship between God. And if, if the foundation is lively, then the stones have to be lively also. Amen? If Jesus is alive, then everyone that comes to him will be alive. God is building a temple of praise with people who have been resurrected from a life of sin and shame by the power of Jesus. The Bible tells us that before we came to Christ, we were dead. Dead. We were dead in trespasses and sins. Our life, were, we were dead in our sins. We were separated from God. We were outcasts. We were not the people of God. We were con not even considered a, a, a part of the people of Israel, the commonwealth of Israel. We were considered foreigners and strangers and aliens, outcasts. Dead in our sins and trespasses. But when we came to Jesus, the Bible tells us in Colossians 2.12, He said, We were buried with Him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with Him through faith of the operation of God, who hath raised Him from the dead. The validation of the fact is of the resurrection of, of, of Christianity is that 
This temple of praise that God is building is a lively temple. You know, I don't want to be a dead Christian. I don't want to go through motions. I want to have life in me. I want my worship to be alive. I don't want my worship when I come to church to be dead. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. No, I want it to come alive. Amen. I want it to come alive. When I read the Bible, I want to come alive. When I pray, I don't want to just sit there and mumble. Mm, I want something to come from my heart. I want to pour out my soul. Why? Because this is a temple of praise. I'm a lively stone. I'm built upon the living stone Christ and I'm a lively stone a part of this holy temple and I do not want to be a dead washed up Christian I want my Christianity to be fresh and alive I want to rejoice as the Bible tells me the joy of the Lord is my strength he said rejoice always and again I say rejoice God wants his people to come alive God don't want us to be dry bones in the pews or dry bones in our walk with God he wants us to be alive he wants us to shine with the glory of God. He wants us to have a fervency. He wants us to be zealous for the things of God. He wants our life, he wants us to, to our life to show forth the very praise of Almighty God. Amen? Amen? And so as a Christian, I'm talking about a temple of praise. God is building a temple. A holy temple. And we are part of that temple tonight. We are part of that temple as Hebrews chapter or go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. The Bible said, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. I'm talking about a temple of praise. We are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwells in us. He said, If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15, Hebrews 13 15, he said, By him therefore let us offer the sacrifices of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips given thanks to his name. All Christians are part of this spiritual temple. Jesus is that living stone. As he said in verse 1, to whom coming unto a living stone, Jesus is that living stone. Jesus is alive. That foundation stone is alive. And in verse 5, he said, ye also as lively stones. In other words, Jesus, the foundation stone is alive. And every stone that God adds to that building is a lively stone. Amen. Thank God that as a Christian, we are alive from the dead. We are alive from the dead. We have the living spirit of God in us. We have that spirit. He said the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. He said, preacher, I feel weak. I feel tired. I understand sometimes the body is tired, but the Bible even tells us, uh, he said, the spirit is willing. The flesh may be weak, but if you allow the spirit to guide you, if you allow that spirit on the inside of you to move you and to guide you, your Christianity will be alive. You will be a living, walking temple of God. When people see you, they will see Jesus Christ. When people are around you, they will, uh, uh, they, they will feel that positive attitude coming from you. It will be a lively thing because you are a walking temple of God and a temple of praise, not of complaining and murmuring like Israel were. In the, in the wilderness, all God heard from them was complaining and complaining and murmuring. And God was sick and tired of that. Because God doesn't like us, like it when people complain and whine about everything. He said the fruits of our lips, giving thanks, that's what God wants. A temple of praise. God wants us to praise our life, live our life to the praise and the glory of God. And so he's building this temple. We have the cornerstone laid out, Jesus Christ. A living stone. And then we have the, the blocks or the different bricks that are being added to the building. That is us, lively stones. And he tells us that it is settled in heaven and it cannot be changed. And in verse 7 and 8, he began to tell us what this precious cornerstone means to us as Christians and what it means to those who are not Christians. In verse 7, he said, Unto you therefore which believe, he is precious. But to them which be disobedient, 
the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto, they, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And so he began to tell us that this cornerstone that he's talking about, this lively stone, Jesus Christ, to the Christians, he is precious. To the Christians and to God Almighty the Father, He is precious. He is that precious foundation stone upon which we are building our lives. You know, if you're building your life upon Jesus, it will never fall. Amen? It will never fall. Build your life upon Christ. Let Him be that foundation upon which you're building your life. And when the storms come and when the waves come against you, your house will not fall because it's built upon a solid rock, Jesus Christ. He is also that precious cornerstone by which we guide and measure our life. You know, we should never as Christians seek or try to compare ourselves to others because... That's not our standard. Other people is not our standard. We all have needs in, in God. We all have uh, our own um, failures and weaknesses that we have to work on. And so we can use men as our standard. Yes, thank God for good godly leaders and pastors and preachers that will set an example. But truly, our real example is that cornerstone, Christ. Like I shared, when, you build, when, they, when they're building that building, they lay the cornerstone. That's the first stone that is laid. And then every other stone is guided by that. Every other stone has to line up with that cornerstone. Every other stone has to be in line and, and, and built properly in line with that cornerstone. The cornerstone is what set the standard for all things. And so Christ is that cornerstone that is setting the standard for every one of us. And so we should seek to build our life to imitate Christ, be followers of Christ. As the Bible said in, a, I think it's in the book of um, 2 Corinthians, he said, we all with open faces beholding as in a glass, the glass being the Bible as a mirror. The glass is, called, uh, is referring to as a mirror. He said, we all behold our face in this mirror called the Bible. He said, when we look into the Bible, he said, what we see is not ourselves. When we read the Bible, God necessarily, yes, we're going to see ourselves, but that's not what God really wants us to focus on. He said, when, he said we're not seeing ourselves, neither are we seeing other Christians. He said, but we're all looking into this Bible. He said, we see the glory of God. We see the glory of Christ. And he said, we are changed into that same image. So when you read the Bible, your desire should be, God, show me Jesus. Let me see how Jesus will live. Let me see how Jesus will think. Let me see how Jesus will act in this situation. Let me see how Jesus will react when he's dealt with in certain ways. Let me see how Christ will do things. And so the Bible said we all, as with open faces, behold in a glass or in a mirror, the, the glory of God, the glory of Christ, he said we are changed into that very image. Image. And so Christians, our standard is that cornerstone, Christ. We must become like Jesus. We must become like Jesus in order to become that temple of praise that God is building. We must become more and more like Jesus. And then to the unbelievers, to us he's precious. To the unbelievers or the sinners, the Bible said he is a stumbling stone. And a stumbling stone is something that caused them to stumble or fall it's an obstacle to their progress. That's the reason why sinners cannot prosper in their way. Even though they will maybe prosper in certain aspects of their life, they will never have a true prosperous life because every time, every time they will stumble at that, thing, at that cornerstone called Christ. They will stumble and fall. It becomes a rock of offense unto them. And their life will never prosper. Their life will never prosper. The wicked cannot prosper. The wicked cannot prosper because they are living in disobedience to the Word of God. And so the remainder of the chapter tells us that God doesn't want us to defile this temple. In verse 11, he said, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, 
Abstain from fleshly lust. The word lust speaks of desires which war against the soul, things that, are, that fight against your soul. Have in your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. And that there wraps up our Bible study for tonight. So we're talking about a temple of praise. God is building an eternal temple of praise. Jesus Christ, verse 4, is that living stone, that cornerstone. In verse 5, that's verse 4. Verse 5, we are those lively stones that are added to the temple. And God is building us and He's making us and He's placing us right where we need to be. And so as Christians, we should try to be all that God wants us to be in this temple of praise. And so we thank God tonight that He's working in us. You know, God is, is constantly, every single day, he's, he's changing us. He's helping us. He's working with us to become better. So let Him, realizing what God is trying to do, is He's trying to make your life into that beautiful temple that will last for all of eternity, singing forth the praise and glory of Almighty God. And with that, may God bless you. We're going to have a, have a wonderful week and, and join us again at 9.45 Sunday morning. Pray for us as we pray for you. And let's have a wonderful service. Father, we give thanks and praise to you for all that you do. Remember each and every one of us. Father, bless and keep your hand upon us. Strengthen us. And bring us back at the appointed time. We give all thanks and praise to you. In Jesus' name. Amen.